It can contain a lot of stuff inside, good as well as bad stuff that can pollute our faith. That is why we must remove the stone of unbelief, the stone of doubt and fear from our heart. And it is for this reason the book of, Revel uh, of Proverbs declares in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Jesus Christ could have just directly called Lazarus, but instead he first prayed to God because of the people, so that they, they may believe that it is God the Father who had sent him. That the people may know who he prays to and on whose behalf he operates. By this, God is telling us that he can directly rescue us or spare us from any issue or from any problem. But instead of doing so, he first let us do, let us do our own things until we come to seek him for answers, for, uh, for guidance and for deliverance, for, for salvation. And then he rescues us so that we may come to know that it is him who has saved us and not we ourselves and this is the reason why god said the following through the prophet isaiah in isaiah chapter 42 verse 8 saying i am the lord that is my name and my glory will i not give to another neither my praise to graven images Isaiah chapter 48 verse 11 had to say for my own sake even for my own sake will I do it for how should my name be polluted and I will not give my glory unto another this is God speaking if the stone was not removed though Lazarus would have been awakened from the dead yet he would have not been able to come out of the cave or from the grave for the stone would have prevented him. Thus the people would have not believed in Jesus Christ as they would have not seen Lazarus alive. This simply means that doubt, unbelief and fear are what cause people's blessing not to be able to transit from the unseen to the seen, from the invisible to the visible. And for the people to believe in the God you pray, they must be able to see the result of your faith. In other terms, they need to see the manifestation or the realization of your faith. And that is the miracle. So what the, 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 the fulfillment of your faith is your miracle. The, the, manifestation, the manifestation, the result of your faith is the miracle. And that is what causes people to believe. To believe in the God that you serve, the God that you pray. They want to see your faith producing miracles. You want to see your faith removing mountains. They want to see your faith moving situations, changing circumstances. For some people, their miracle is already released. But it is unable to transit from the unseen to the seen because of doubt or unbelief. For instance, one is called, maybe called for an interview, but he will start declaring or thinking in himself that I have been called for many interviews before and all did not work out. And this is no different does the person end up not seeing his job concrete uh, manifesting materializing because of what he thinks he is doubtful is is not settled in his mind he does not believe that god can do it this time So once you remove, once the stone of unbelief, doubt and fear is taken away, now you can call your breakthrough to manifestation.
For there is nothing now that is standing on the way between you and your blessing, between you and your breakthrough. Hence, Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, All things whatsoever you, you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, 23 to 24. Jesus still speaking. For verily I say unto you, that whatsoever you shall say unto this mountain, that what, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Only your faith. That is what God needs. Your faith, only your faith. When Lazarus came out of the grave, Jesus asked the people to remove his grave clothes, for it was a Jewish custom to put bands all over the body of the dead before burying him. And these bands are actually expressing the fact that the person is dead. For the person wears burial clothes. That is the reason why Jesus had to ask the people to remove this burial clothes from Lazarus. So that he will no longer be identified or associated with the grave or with the dead. And as he is no longer dead but alive. In other, in other terms, Jesus Christ is saying unto us that when we pray and that our blessing is busy manifesting, we must change our attitude and speech to dissociate our blessing from the unseen, but rather associate it with the seen. To dissociate our blessing from the invisible and associate it to the visible. This is exactly the same uh, 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 attitude that David had when he heard Goliath threatening the people of Israel. First Samuel chapter 17 verse 26 to 30 which says, And David spoke to the man that stood by him saying, What shall be done to the man that kills the, this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that kills him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke unto the man. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David and said, Why did you come down hider and with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness i know your pride and your no, your naughtiness of and the naughtiness of your heart for you are come down that you may see the battle and david said what have i now done is there not a cause and he turned from him toward another and spoke after the same manner and the people answered him after Again, after the former manner. In other terms, David was not focusing on what, on, 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 on the threats of Goliath. He was not first focusing on the stature of Goliath. He was not threatening, uh, focusing on the fact that Goliath was a giant. What was really uh, important or what was uh, 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 the focus of David is the reward that will obtain the person who will kill Goliath. Why? Because in the eyes or in the mind of, of David, he had already defeated Goliath. He knew already, he believed already that God will surely give him victory over Goliath. So that is the kind of attitude that we should have 
when we come in prayer before God. When we pray unto God, we must have this attitude that we believe truly that God will answer us, that God will, will, will see us through, that God will save us, that God will believe us. Our attitude must express it, or the, the, our action must express it, the way we behave must express it. By doing so, we would have removed completely the stone of unbelief from our heart. And that is what God is asking you to do. Remove the stone of unbelief and doubt and fear from, the, from your heart. It is what is keeping your blessing far from you. It is what is standing between you and your breakthrough. So, if you believe that God is able to do what you expecting from Him, say this prayer after me with faith, not doubting, not wavering. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for your teaching. Thank you for your infallible word. I, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you forgive me for any time I did not believe in your word. Forgive me for any time I doubted your word. And I please ask you to help me to remove any stone of unbelief, fear, and doubt from my heart so that nothing may stand between my miracle and I, so that nothing may prevent me from truly, fully believing in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing may stand between the materialization of my breakthrough and, and I. In the name of Jesus Christ. I therefore commend any stone of unbelief, fear, and doubt to be removed from my heart in the name of Jesus Christ. And now I speak unto you my healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say, come forth and be concrete. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I dissociate you from any kind of death and grave. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak unto you my deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I say. Come forth and be materialized. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I detach you. From any kind of death and grave in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak unto you my restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say, come forth and be evident, be tangible in the name of Jesus Christ. And I disconnect you from any kind of death. And grave in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak unto you my breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I say come forth and be real. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I dissociate you from any kind of death. And grave in the name of Jesus. I speak unto you my blessing. And I say in the name of Jesus Christ. Come forth. And be tangible, be palpable in the name of Jesus Christ. And I disconnect you from any kind of death and grave in Jesus Christ's name. I thank you, Abba Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Glory, Blessed Father, the only true God, the Almighty God for having made your word reality 
in my life in the name of Jesus Christ may you be forever exalted and glorified in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen